Why examples? Well, for many reasons. First, to illustrate theory, because uh, a good example tells a lot. Then, because functionality economy is not a process. It's, it's an economic model. It's not a business model. And it's far more interesting. And you'll see that the three examples I selected are very different, sometimes contradictory or opposed. And the third reason is if I say that Michelin replaced selling tires by selling a number of kilometers, it's all very nice. But if you work in domestic appliances or IT, you won't be able to use what you learned. So what's important is to transfer experience from the uh, examples we study to any type of business. So let's talk about Michelin. That's uh, very much in the literature, but not very much analyzed. Michelin has decreased their use of raw material for tires used by major road transportation uh, companies. And this was accompanied by an increase in profitability for the manufacturer and a decrease in prices for users. And that's important because in the economy of uh, good selling, if a manufacturer increases its prices by 10%, if they get a 10% discount, the manufacturer loses. And here, we have a solution, of, uh, a possibility of a win-win situation because you have the energy and raw material item that uh, compensates for the others. So how do we achieve that? Well, we make the product last to amortize for the fixed cost of the product by using it more. So let's take a look at what happened. Michelin talked to truck companies and they offered a tire that saved nine, uh, uh, that saved on fuel. And truck companies said, OK, you're Michelin, we trust you, but we don't want to pay more because we have to come up with the positive figures. So Michelin changed the model and said, OK, we'll send one of our technicians in your premises, we'll make sure that he checks on the tires, checks on the uh, inflating of the tires, and he will work on the tires as much as possible. And then when it's no longer possible to work on the, on the tires, he will change the uh, rolling layer. So in this model, if we take an index of 100 for the three criteria presented here, we see that in the tire plus service version of Michelin, so that's functionality economy and selling of the use, we see that if we increase the consumption of raw material and energy by 25%, we can increase the life of the tire by two and a half. So that's a factor of six, so we can use 20 tires when we used to use 64 tires. So you can calculate quickly minus 70%, and we also sometimes refurbish the tire. So that means 50% saving in the use of raw material and energy, which is quite a lot. The second criterion is margin, and the margin was increased significantly. So now the question is, have prices followed the margin? No, not at all. They increased prices and increased the margin, which is quite an event, because usually when you decrease prices, you decrease your profits. But this was feasible because the energy and raw material item was reduced. The next question is, OK, what about the client? If we take a look at what the clients say, we see that when they compare between an average invoice for their tires for one year and an invoice of number of kilometers per year, they end up at minus 36%. Internal costs have disappeared and no longer show up on in this value, and the fuel consumption has decreased. So we see that clients and suppliers have partnered on the long and medium term, unlike what happens on in a short-term relationship. So in conclusion to this example, Michelin 
overcame this thanks to good control over costs and by differentiating their offering because they added services for their clients. And then the power of the brand, which has great recognition, has not managed to increase prices, which would have been justified because the tires were of better quality. But the functionality economy allowed increasing margins, which was a desired output. And this came along with a reduction in prices. A second example rang Xerox. They had the same problem as Michelin, but another, uh, also another one, i.e. when a used tired is a used tired, a copy machine is not necessarily worn out at the end of the contract. The client says, I want the last version of your product because I guess it's better quality, which is not always true. And this is where the financial director played a major role because he felt he had to try and increase the value of his assets. And the solution was to retain ownership and replace a contract for means where you say, okay, I'm delivering this uh, Xerox ma machine by a contract on means. The copy will be of high quality, this is my commitment, but this copying machine will be made of either new components or second-hand components, whatever, so long as it works. And the client doesn't lose out here because the only income for the copy, copying machine producer is the sale of the use, the uh, services and maintenance is paid by them, they have an interest to make sure that the system works, otherwise they decrease their income. And you might tell me, okay, if I replace workers with technicians who can choose the components because they had to totally overhaul the range of copying machine to make sure that the components are functional and operational on all models in the range. They used technicians with a high value and this increased the cost of wages by two. But this also increased profit by 200 millions per year, and this was proven over 10 years period. And on top of that, they decreased their waste by 24,000 tons. And this is very important because in electronics, there is a lot of heavy metal that are very costly and very polluting. So in conclusion with this example, we see that Xerox also uh, defeated resistance to price through a reduction in costs and by an increased maintainability of their equipment. And we see that, and this is very important and which creates a total difference from Michelin, is that high quality labor, although at Michelin the technician was also high quality technician, but this is even more powerful because high quality labor allowed profits to rate, to, to soar. And once again, as always in the history of economy, the cost of labor does not uh, matter. What's important is the ratio bet between what it costs and what it produces. Third example, in the 1990s, there was a big campaign to criticize chlorinated solvate, solvents because they are difficult to eliminate in the environment and they're highly polluting, but they're very useful to remove fat. And the industry was almost banned by the German authorities. So the uh, Dow Chemical subsidiary in Germany was about to close down their business, but an executive had an idea, which you can see here, and that was to create this box within which the operator is working. There is a glass window protecting him. There is a, There are gloves, and they have clean solvent on one side. In the middle, they have uh, this uh, shower to remove the grease, and on the other side, he has a box of dirty solvent. So a subsidiary 
was set up. It's called Safe Cam. And their business is about providing this box for free and to provide clean solvent tanks and to recover a polluted solvent, to recycle it. So here we're moving from a business based on sales to a business based on added value with an additional service thanks to a piece of equipment. So they're transforming a consumable into a sustainable product. And there again, it's added value that's of interest and not the sales because the sales of SafeCam is below the one of Dow Chemicals, but the added value is much higher. And as there is price and non-price competitiveness with a much higher quality of service, SafeCam had its market share moving from 8% to 50% over five years. So if we look at what Michelin did, they went from a contract of means to a contract based on results, and they added services. Xerox, they didn't add any service, but they totally, they had a total overall of their production chain so that all their components could be fitted to any model. So these are two different types of economic or business models. And in the case of SafeCam, we have consumables transformed into sustainable goods, whereas in traditional economy, this would be something which uh, would not take place. But in practice, we see that this obstacle can be overcome in many cases. So this is a very interesting model indeed. And this is why we have to insist on the fact that this is an economic model and not just a process. And to understand it, we need to take a look at many examples and understand that there is almost always a solution.